Hey everyone, this is CPU Kubota, and welcome back to more Shovel Knight. I swear by the end of the series, I'm gonna hold that up for a full five minutes. Last time, we... We cleared out the lost city of Mole Knight and expanded our life slot. And unlocked three more levels. Which include the Clockwork Tower, the Flying Machine, and the one that is not close off from us currently, the Stranded Ship. This time, I think you may know what we're going to be doing today. We... We are quite obviously going to be going to the new area that doesn't require an extra fight. Obviously. Alright, just need to get myself some I-Core. And then we can be on our merry little way. So, without any further ado, I mean, I guess I could do a flying machine, but honestly, I like to keep that one for last. Also, we have a shortcut, which just flings back to the armor outpost. I'm not going to show it because it's really not useful unless you're being blocked and your path is being blocked. Anyway, without further ado, let's, uh, do it. Sharpen thy shovel. Alright. First of all, I would like to say, the music in the level. Holy crap, I'm just gonna let you listen. I think that this music is by far one of the best tracks that I have ever heard, regardless of video game music or game. It, it is that good. I really love it. In fact, I really love the atmosphere of this place. It's really lonely and desolate, which you'll be seeing why that is pre pretty uh, characteristic of the game of the character who is running this joint. We also have wolves as an enemy, as well as these viking yetis. Not exactly sure of their real name, I'm just gonna call them viking yetis. Their helmets actually protect them from your pogo attacks, meaning you have to take them head on, which I think is kind of cool. I also enjoy how they do that, it kind of, it's just a, and they're just kind of a pain in your neck. Normally, you won't hear me, hear me saying that very often, but somehow, some, something about them just struck a chord with me. Let me guess, it's another useless trample. Oh, 350 gold. I will take that gladly. Okay, fine. That, I'll admit that one. That enemy replacement was pretty jerkish. Then again, it wouldn't be a retro game without some jerkish, jerkish enemy placement. Wait. Is that, is that, is that breakable? No, just looked a bit different. We break this, we get a bomb. Luckily, if you're thinking of a treasure chest, you're immune to bomb blasts. I mean, it's pretty obvious why. It's so you don't get killed unfairly when you don't have any control. But still, I mean, it's just kind of funny to think of. We have our first checkpoint, and we have ice mages! Which, which, their shots will rain down ice. Which, which will disappear if it hits anything else. We also have icy versions of these guys. I'm not exactly sure what's different. Do they have more health points, or maybe it's just an aesthetic choice. The charge handle comes really in handy with those. Glad I picked that up. Oh, now this was just waiting to be tackled with the dust mitts. Dust knuckles, not dust knuckles. Also, bomb blasts kill those guys. Good to know. <laughs> Just when you think of, no, I'm gone. We have another new mechanic: snow that we can knock down to cover our, cover up spikes, which I bore, which I think is a pretty interesting mechanic. It's not really that interesting. 
when you think about it objectively. And could you give me a lift, horse guy? Thank you. Here I'm in the secret room. I enjoy the setting of this level too. You're exploring a s an abandoned Viking ship. And I suck at dodging. I guess I could have just used the phase locket. Which I will definitely do, because I'm running extremely on the health, my god. Mad cons are it. Let me just say, if you tackle the flying machine, you're in for a big uh, challenge. Then again, you will get an incredible reward if you get the... If you get the treasure there, you're in for a great reward. So, it, it's, ac it's actually... I actually somewhat recommend to doing doing it in an orthodox way and doing the flying machine first to make these levels easier. If you really want a challenge and an easy time with these. Which honestly I don't see why would you want why you would want to do that. I'm not sure what was in that. Was that a music sheet? I guess I'll add that in post. Also I can't get that anymore. Maybe they don't fall off ledges like Red Cooper Troopers. Maybe that's the difference between blue and regular. Maybe it's just purely acidic. Sound like I said acidic there. And we got a new thing. These twin bird statues that puke up rainbows. I like to think of them as... You might think, oh, how does that fit in? Well, I like to think of cold northern lights. Also, I know something about the Northern Lights in the background. I think they kind of look like an audio file. I'm pretty sure that's what they are. Just like a... Maybe it's the audio file of this song. Oh my goodness, that would be so dumb. That would be so meta. Oh my goodness. And you're like, oh my goodness, now we're gonna get across a giant pit. Well, well first you gotta think. Gee, how did we get across another giant pit before? But there's only one of these. Oh, you gotta think with your brain, Sonny. That's what it's for. Because we can open up. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, I almost died there. So we can rise up. You rise up. Rise up. I'm sorry. I made a Hamilton reference, but I couldn't resist. Oh, 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 you tricksy, tricksy boy. Oh, oh he doesn't crush them. That's too bad. Their patterns aren't too hard to learn, so they're not too much of a threat. Then again, they're kind of fun to fight. Ooh, that was close. And it fell down there. Man, I am doing garbage at this level. Watch again? Nope. Ah! Wall Apple. I'll take it! I want to demonstrate a cool thing you can do with um, dirt wall clods. That's fun. That's what I'm temporarily calling them. I'm not sure I can demonstrate it here, though. Basically, you can just pogo off them. That's my big... Up. Oh, yeah, you can do that. Just thought you might want to know. In case you didn't already figure it out. And I died. Well, I am guess I'm going to be backtracking. Well, you can do that. You just have to hit them by the side. And I'm gonna try not to commentate during this part because apparently it's like super ultra hard. Okay, I have no pits to fall into. Die! 
Dang it, now we got something to fall into. Thank you. Ooh, close. And that breaks block, so I didn't have to do that. And it's another useless travel. Whoop de frickin' do. Sorry if I sound too angry, it's just I am a bit annoyed. Oh, you're not gonna come down. We get both a wall bomb and a wall chicken. And a very valuable checkpoint that we could erase, but I'm not going on. Simply because I have a feeling that the section up ahead is tough. Wait a sec. Ah, so this is where we get it. Which is. And we find Chester! In the villager out in the field, I always have all the deals. I can't believe what I just found in this chest. For 4,000 uh, gold, you'll get the worst relic in all the game! Now, I will say that this is not that great of an item. However. However. Yeah, it's fine. It costs 15 magic to activate, but has a huge area of effect. If you're swarmed, then it's useful. And I got killed by knockback. I guess I'll keep this in. So what I was trying to say is... It's, it costs 15 magic to activate, and it's useful if you're like surrounded by enemies and you don't have an easy way to deal with them. It's costly, but it's... I'd say it's kind of worth it. <gasps> okay, fine. Sure. So, overall, I think the Warhorn is okay. Not the greatest relic. Probably the worst. I mean, other than the Thrawning character. Because I have literally never used the Thrawning character. Except for, like, a few places where it's, like, meant, like, you're... Like, it's... Like, infinitely clear that you need... That you should use it. So, I'm just gonna use the Dozen Knuckles. Eh. Nice. Of course! I'll be back. I guess I didn't need to cut that out, but I didn't want to. I don't want you to just sit through the same thing. Now die. Die. Die, Puffer! The um, charge handle is also good for getting your gold back. Because it increases the range of your swipe. Okay, that's jerky snow placement. Alright, so I can't hit him. I can poke off him. Yeah, whatever. He's dead. Of course. Ugh, I hate these guys. Then again, there's an easy way to deal with them. I'll show you in just a sec, as I just realized it myself. See ya! And I'll be back. I just defeated that guy with a fishing rod. So it's that easy way of defeating all these dudes. Well, ramming them! Because it's pretty much all, pretty much the best way to deal with them. I, don't, I haven't seen enemies as consequential since I'm not sure ever. Okay, fine. They respawn. And they still gave me problems. Okay, I'll cut to when I get across that gap.
Also, it's nice to note. You don't slide while you're charging. You just move really, really slow. And I finally made it after too many deaths that I am... Too many deaths that I, that I am willing to say. Sure, let's go with that. And this is the one place that I'm gonna use the throwing anchor. Because, quite frankly, the enemies are arranged perfectly for it. I'm pretty sure this is just to familiarate familiarate players with like uh or maybe I think it was just for trailer purposes, honestly. Whee! I ain't like that. So we just go up this ladder. What characteristic of the ship? And where and where there and where there is I don't know. Uh, and where there are enemies at the top shooting at me. Sure, let's go with that. Wizrobes. Okay. I suppose I could use my throwing anchor there. You know what? I'm thinking. Be thinking that it's pretty much my only vertical weapon. That's a tall, that's a tall order. And then again, I do have a thing that lets me walk off spikes, so I'll use it as a panic button. <laughs> panic! I just blew myself up because of my own stupidity. I am a, I am a good let's player. Come at me, boy! All right. Ah, uh, dang it! Oh come on! I was on that. And we are back to where I died. Getting at my phase locket. I feel that I needed that guy to get that. I also get the feeling I could just respawn him. Oh! I'll be back! That's a lot of dying in this episode. And I got my music sheet. Now I need to get the heck out of here. <clears throat> I'm having an aneurysm. One moment. And I'm just brute forcing my way through with the phase locket. Hey, don't say this is uncharacteristic, because it's definitely not. And boom! We get ourselves some more chicken to heal up for the boss. Which is. So, my old friend, the day has finally come. This will be our final duel. Should we not lay down our shovels in part as equals? <clears throat> the order has no equals. Surely you can recognize power. Join us. 
You've forgotten our oath. What happened to the proud warrior I once knew? <laughs> no more words. The bitter cold shall claim you. This guy! Polar Knight! He is my favorite knight in the Order of No Quarter. By far. Not only is his theme cool, I always loved snow. And I like it how I have a regular shovel and he has a snow shovel. And then we're just gonna heat. And we're just gonna keep snowballing like this forever. Then I am okay with this, because that gives me a chance to talk. Why do I love this guy so much? First of all, his boss music. I said that his regular theme was amazing, now his boss theme is even better, which is just a more epic version of his level. And I like that he has a history with Shovel Knight, and I like it how he's kind of like a fallen friend. Alright, now, I'll finally, finally, get on with it. So, I'd say that he has probably one of the toughest fights out of any order of No Quarter Knight. He can block your pogo attack, which is something that a lot of people would say. And he relies a lot on instant spikes, which I'm not the hugest fan of, but eh, what you gonna do? If you pogo more than twice on him, you will get counterattacked. He is a legitimately difficult boss. As I defeat him relatively easily. Anyway, I like his boss fight, even if it's not the most difficult. And I get and I guess I just got extremely lucky and just used the face locket a lot. And with that. We have cleared out the lost lost ship. No need uh, for multiple digs. We can just dig up our campfire in one stroke like a boss. And now we got three rummy encounters. I especially like how they block up all exits. So... Which one of you should I fight? I suppose I'll do this one simply because it's our reward. And why are we in the lich yard? Strange. Don't know why we're don't quite know why we're in the lich yard setting, but hey, we get to hear the awesome music again. Always welcome in my book. And this is just the bonus level, so I'm just going to kind of talk over it. I mean, sure, sh sure, Polar Knight might not be the most interesting or personality, or he may not be Mr. Personality, but I enjoy his character enough to tolerate him, and really, I don't really need much else. He's a fun. I think he's a cool character. Stoic. I've always had that thing for Stoic Vikings. I don't know. I, they always just appealed to me. Get get down there, Bunk Clang. And yes, that is a ride. Super Skeleton! Aha! I'm leaving you behind. Not sure why we revisited the Lichard with that one. But hey, it removes the clan. It makes sure that our path is where I want to go next. But first, let's turn in our music sheets, shall we? <laughs> A cold reception. Um, I'm gonna play. Just because I like this song so much, yeah, you, you can play any music sheet that you... You can play any song you want in the town by talking to the bard. And I just want to listen to this music some more. 
And with that, I think our pockets are pretty well lined. So, I'm gonna upgrade my magic. And I'm going to take this wonderful shortcut. Over to... Oh. And get a music sheet. Over to the armor outpost. A simple way to go between the two. And for the 6,000 gold, I want to get the Drop Spark, which is essentially like Zelda's Sword Beam. It'll send a shockwave along the ground when you're at full health. Not incredibly useful, but uh, it's a little nice thing nonetheless. You can help out with a, you can help out a little bit with bosses. So I'm, just, so I'm just gonna turn this extra music sheet back in. Ah, if we do that. No way! That was unbelievable! The whole pile with one stroke! How is that even possible? You're truly a legend of dating, Shovel Knight! My hero of the Blue Burrower! You... It serves no other purpose than to make that mole happy, but... Eh, I can know with that. Nah, it's not a mole, that's a hedgehog. A doy! Of course it's a hedgehog. And I'm just gonna turn the music sheet. I do not like you checking me out! I'm just going to take the scenic route and go back to the armor outpost. So, I think that pretty much wraps it up. We de we defeated Polar Knight at the lost ship. Stranded ship, clear. We defeated Polar Knight at the stranded ship, beat up a bonus stage, upgraded our magic. I'd say that's a pretty good job. Next time on Shovel Knight, we're going to be heading to a clockwork tower. And battling one of my more fa one of my favorites in the Order of No Quarter. See you guys then.